Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Abelson from Genetic Health. Today, we're going to go over the Dorsey and Plantar Flexion Test. For the first part of this test, we're going to keep it quite simple, actually, and we're just going to compare left and right side. Can I get you to point your toes right down? This is the plantar flex position. Now, what we're looking for is asymmetries or imbalances. So when we look at this, we'll see that you know, they're pretty even here. But let's say, for example, one was up like this, we only go down so far, then we would see an imbalance. Now we're going to get Leanne to bring her feet up all the way into the dorsiflex position. Now what you're going to notice here too is that she's actually pulling her heel off of the ground so we can get a better comparison. And again, we're going to you know, compare left-right side. And sometimes it's not even so much that you're going to see a huge difference, but you may notice there's a lot of stiffness on one side compared to the other or lack of mobility. So we just take it to a few times back and forth between plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. And Leanne here's got pretty good symmetry. But let's say we had a restriction in, in dorsiflexion. We may notice that one side you're only able to bring it part way, and the other side you will bring it up very, very easily. And then we just basically look at them and say, okay, we've got a similarity here, so she passed this test. Before we get into the main part of the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion test, there's one other section I just want to go over here. And it's just actually doing a very simple squat. People will notice sometimes they actually can't get down very low because they have a lot of restriction in their ankles. So I'll just get Leanne here to basically do a squat, come down, and for, you know, she can come down pretty good here, but a lot of people feel a lot of tension on both sides here. And go back up again, and try to come down as far as you can right now. Good. Right down. So that's good. But a lot of people notice at certain points, they actually can't come down because of an ankle restriction. And they may notice that it's more predominant on the left or right side. If this is the case, jot this down, because it is an indication of an imbalance. Hello, Dr. Evangelos Milonas here at Kinetic Health. Now we'll be demonstrating a dorsiflexion test known as the weight-bearing lunge test. This is a comparative test, so we'll be comparing left and right sides, and we're trying to quantify this. We want to get some hard data down. So what we're using is a measuring tape. Uh, any type will do. You want to tape it to the floor, make sure it's flat, and make sure it's perpendicular with the wall. And as a visual reference, you might even want something that's running up along the wall to give you a visual reference. What we're doing is we're starting out with uh, Leanne's left foot here at 10 centimeters. So her big toe is right at 10 centimeters. And what's going to happen is we're going to have Leanne lunge forward and try to touch her knee to the wall. Things to remember are you want to keep the heel flat on the ground, make sure it doesn't come up. And as you're driving forward, your, your line of drive should be in line with the second toe. You want to make sure you're not deviating uh, to the inside or the outside as straight as possible. So we're going to have Leanne here start. Yeah, so she's coming forward. As you can see, the heel's staying on the ground, and she can touch the wall. So this is our starting uh, point of reference here. Now move back slowly. So once you've established that you can touch your knee to the wall, you want to go back in small increments, up to about a centimeter. So right now we're at, yeah, 11 centimeters. Perfect. So come forward again, making sure the heel stays on the ground. So as you can see here, the heel's coming up slightly. So we've gone back a little too far. So come forward. We're talking millimeters now, about half a centimeter. Perfect. So we're at ten and a half centimeters now. So come forward slowly, making sure you're going straight. Good. And as you can see, she can barely touch the wall. Good. So for this left foot, what we would break down is 10.5 centimeters. And that would be our, our point of maximum dorsiflexion for Leanne. We would repeat this for the right foot and then compare the two measurements. You want to be within two centimeters. If you're not within two centimeters between left and right, then you would assume there's a restriction or, or something that's inhibiting dorsiflexion. One thing to remember is, even though we're getting some objective data here, you also have to pay attention to the subjective data. Talk to, to your patient, to your friend, whoever it is that's doing the measurement, and, and listen, you know, does one side feel stiff or restricted? Is the calf tight? You have to take all this information into account because even though we're measuring things, some people might force their way through the range of motion even though they are just experiencing some discomfort and we need to take all that information into account. So this is a great test to get down some hard data on dorsiflexion.